In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather around the table of the Lord as one community and as one church, united by the Holy Spirit. In this Eucharist, let us pray that the Holy Spirit will give us the zeal and commitment to work hard for the renewal of the church and society. Renewal is God's gift and our mission. We ask the Spirit of Pentecost to journey with us in our dream to be church totally for God and for others and to be true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that we may be more united as God's people, as God's church, who listens to the voice of the Good Shepherd. We also ask Mary, our mother, to be with us as she was with the apostles at the upper room. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
us pray. Lord God, you have shown us in the Blessed Virgin Mary the model of sublime love and profound humility. Grant that your church may be like her, obedient to your commandment of love, so that by giving itself wholeheartedly to seeking your glory and to serving others, it may stand before all peoples as the sacrament of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up into heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When the apostles entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. city founded on holy mountains loves the gates of Zion more than any dwelling in Jacob said of you, O city of God, but of Zion it must be said, they all were born right here. confirms this, the Lord notes in the register of the peoples, this one was born here, so all sing in their festive dance, within you is my true home. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
a wedding in Cana in Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Reverend Father Jun Sescon, Commissioner of the Commission 
on the formation of the laity and Christian communities. Reverend Father Jade Likwanan, Commissioner of the Archdiocesan Commission on Youth, Brother Priests, can celebrating with us, Reverend Deacons, our dear lay faithful, our catechists, and young people from the different parishes, communities, ministries, movements, and organizations in the Archdiocese of Manila, those who are here present, and those joining the live streaming of this Mass. Good morning. My dear lay faithful, thank you for coming and thank you for welcoming me in the Archdiocese of Manila. Your presence here is for me a concrete and tangible gesture of your welcoming spirit. Ramdam ko ang mainit ninyong pagtanggap sa akin. Tauspuso rin akong nagpapasalamat sa inyong tauspusong pagtanggap sa akin bilang inyong abang tagapaglingkod. Such welcome is made more profound as we gather together in the spirit of prayer, made most special by the living presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. For where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus assures us, there I am in their midst. We are one with Christ. This is the very experience of the first Christian disciples as narrated in the Acts of the Apostles in our first reading. That is why they speak of one heart and one accord to prayer, which depicts the unity of the Christian disciples in Christ. Christ brought them all together as one in prayer, together with Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is the very essence of the Eucharist, which we are celebrating together, that we may all be one in Christ. Hence, we call the Eucharist also the sacrament of communion. In the spirit of prayer and communion, we have in fact disposed ourselves to the steerings of the Holy Spirit, through whom our Lord speaks to us opening our minds and hearts and allowing us to listen to Christ, our Shepherd, and to listen to one another as members of Christ's flock. All of you are here to represent the laity of the Archdiocese of Manila, to represent the 93 parishes from 13 vicariates in five cities, various communities, organizations, and movements. You comprise the 90 plus percent of the Catholic community of the Archdiocese of Manila. Your number alone makes you indispensable and crucial. But more than the number, your indispensable and crucial role lies in this. As sharers in the Church's saving mission, and what does a sharers in the Church's saving mission, and what does that really mean to you? It means that like the clergy and the religious, you also are sent by Christ to be witnesses 
and living instruments of His salvation to the world, which is the very mission of the Church itself. I was moved by, video, by the video clip which the Archdiocese of Manila Facebook page posted on June 20. It is addressed to you, my dear lay faithful. Paano ko matutulungan si Cardinal Advincula sa kanyang tungkulin? And it provides a short but substantial answer. Sa pamamagitan ng pakikipag-ugnayan sa pakikisa at pagtutulungan, dahil sa pamamagitan nito, ang simbahan ay nagiging isang buhay na simulain para sa lipunan. Dahil dito, ang mga laiko ay dapat magtaglay ng malinaw na pagkaunawang sila ay hindi lamang nabibilang sa simbahan, kundi sila mismo ay ang simbahan. My dear predecessor, Cardinal Chito Tagle, responds beautifully to the question. In a short video message posted in social media, which you must have already seen. Sabi niya, Sa Manila, ang dami-dami nating gifts and talents. Bawat isa, tingnan, ano ba ang aking gift? Ano ba yung kaloob na maari kong mayambag para sa buong simbahan? Mararamdaman niya, na hindi siya naglalakad na mag-isa. Alam niya na marami siyang kasama. I could only nod and smile in agreement to Cardinal Chito. My dear lay faithful, see how special, indispensable, and crucial indeed is your role in the Church. Since being secular or being in the world is your, is your special characteristic as laity, your special vocation is to seek the Kingdom of God by engaging in temporal affairs and directing them according to God's will. Thus, you live in the world, in each and every one of the world's occupations and callings, and in the ordinary circumstances of social and family life. In your own particular contexts or life situation in the world, and through the gifts which you have received, you are called to be witnesses of Christ to others in your faith, hope, and charity. Your various life situations and your corresponding challenges and responses actually manifest the wonderful diversity that you are members of the Church. Our Mother, the Church, teaches us that all your works, if accomplished in the Spirit, become spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, namely, your prayers and apostolic undertakings, your family and married life, your daily work, your relaxation of mind and body, even the hardships of life, if patiently born. And so, by your holy actions, you thereby consecrate the world itself. My role is to help and lead you 
in fulfilling your special vocation as your shepherd sent by Christ. As I have emphasized in my homily yesterday at my installation, you are Christ's sheep, not mine. I serve you as your shepherd in the name and on behalf of Christ, our chief shepherd. But you and I are joined together by a close relationship. As your shepherd, I am called to minister to you, while you as members of Christ's flock are called to eagerly collaborate with me as your shepherd and teacher. But all of us are Christ's witnesses and living instruments towards the fulfillment of a saving mission. While I am called to be Christ's herald as an archbishop, you as lady are called to become powerful heralds of the faith in your ordinary circumstances in the world. Your principal role in the church's saving mission is to help one another to achieve greater holiness of life so that the world may be filled with the Spirit of Christ and may be made the more effectively attain its destiny in justice, in love, and in peace. My dear Le Faithful, such is your great dignity and responsibility in the Church. I would really need your prudent advice and your service in various offices. As I renewed yesterday my commitment to be a listening shepherd to you all, I would also need your renewed commitment and zeal to serve Christ in the Church. With your experience, I, along with the clergy and the religious in the Archdiocese, am enabled to judge more clearly and more appropriately in spiritual and temporal matters. To and together, we can thus more effectively fulfill our mission in the Church for the life of the world. For that to happen, we must learn to listen. First of all, to listen to Christ, our Chief Shepherd. And second, to listen to one another as Christ's sheep or disciples in order to discern Christ's bidding and for us to empower one another to bring His will to fulfillment. Our Gospel reading according to the Apostle Matthew presents us Mary who inspires and teaches us to listen to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was very attentive to the urgent need of the, at the wedding banquet, which ran out of wine. With her motherly concern, Mary conveyed it to her son, Jesus. They have no wine, was all she said. Even if Jesus replied, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. Yet Mary was fully confident that she instructed the servers at the wedding banquet, do whatever he tells you. 
And true enough, our Lord listened to his mother's plea and thereby transformed the jars of water into wine of high quality. That was his first sign or miracle which revealed his glory, thus bringing his disciples to believe in him. See, Mary leads us to Christ and directs us to do whatever Christ tells us. She actually teaches us to listen to Christ attentively and faithfully, not only by her words, but by her very life itself, listening to God's will and trusting in Him totally and unconditionally. That is why Mary is Christ's disciple par excellence, the most preeminent member of the Church, the brightest herald of Christ's saving mission. The closer we are to Mary, the closer she leads us to Christ. Mary, our Blessed Mother, help us, helps us to dispose ourselves to listen to Christ, like how she instructed the servers at the wedding banquet in Cana, do whatever He tells you. She leads us to Christ so that we open our minds and hearts to Him, to listen to Him, and to do whatever He tells us. In the Spirit, I am here as your shepherd to listen to you, to listen to your needs and your heart's longings in the name of Christ. And together, let us bring our needs and our heart's longings to our Chief Shepherd, Christ our Lord, and do whatever He tells us. If we are not open, if we are not willing and ready, how can we listen to Christ and do whatever He tells us? A listening spirit is therefore what we all need to do our share in the saving mission of Christ. Let us work and journey together in the Spirit with Mary as our constant example and inspiration. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Joseph, husband of Mary, and patron of the Universal Church, pray for us. Amen. With Mary, the mother of the Church, we now approach our Heavenly Father with confidence that our prayers will be answered. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may never fail in its duty of welcoming the marginalized and those excluded from society let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the lay faithful may be agents of transformation and renewal in society and in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community may reach out with love and care to people ignored by society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear 
our prayer. Let the sick, the deprived, and the lonely may find support from their Christian brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ may be received in the Lord's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, through the intercession of the mother of your Son, listen to the prayers of your people. Grant what we seek in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy Church. Lord, transform these gifts which we bring to you with joyful hearts into the sacrament of your salvation on this memorial of the Virgin Mary in glory. For she is the shining model of true worship 
for your church and of our duty to offer ourselves as a holy victim, pleasing in your eyes, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For in your infinite goodness, we have given, you have given to the Virgin, to the Virgin Church, the model of true worship in the Virgin Mary. She is the Virgin of Prayer, who sings of your mercy in her canticle of praise, who shows concern for the Bridegroom and Bride of Cana, and intercedes for them with her Son, who prays with the Apostles, in oneness of mind and heart. She is the Virgin Mother who gives birth to your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit and at the foot of the cross is proclaimed as, your mo as Mother of the people of the New Covenant. She is the Virgin who offers presenting the firstborn in your temple and sharing in, in his self-offering beside the tree of everlasting life. She is the Virgin who keeps vigil, awaiting the resurrection of her Son with unwavering hope and looking forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit with steadfast faith. In our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am worthy, not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, and, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, we have offered to you in sacrifice the holy mysteries of your table and have received with loving hearts the body and blood of your Son. Grant that your Church may look always to the Blessed Virgin and so grow in fervor of faith, be confirmed in love, and be strengthened by the hope of future glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, Reverend Fathers, distinguished guests, my fellow lay servant leaders of the Archdiocese of Manila. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We truly thank the Lord for the gift of a new Archbishop and Father to us all. It is providential that it is in the celebration of the year of St. Joseph that a new father in Arkham is also named Jose. We welcome you with open hearts and with an assurance that the Council of the Lady of the Archdiocese of Manila will fully support and pray for your intentions. The pandemic, though limiting, became a fruitful chapter for the lay servant leaders of this archdiocese. And though physically distant, we were able to reorganize and continue to establish communion among ourselves through our Zoom assemblies. Your Eminence, with your motto, Odium, I will listen. We welcome your open ears and heart with joy and humility. You are truly like Jesus, our good shepherd who wants to know his flock. Today we offer you the fruit of our communion, our dreams, our questions, our proposals, all for the good of our local church. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank His Excellency Broderick, Bishop Broderick Pabilio, our beloved past apostolic administrator, Father June Siscon, our formation minister, and Father Jason Lagueta of the Arts Institute for Research and Development for helping us clarify and articulate our longings as a community of lay servants in this difficult and challenging time. Your Eminence, please accept the fruit of our reflection and communion. We pray that our lowly offering will help you lead and serve our Archdiocese. Allow us to welcome you once more and hereby pledge our love, respect, support, and prayers for the success and fulfillment of your pastoral ministry here in this part of our land. Maraming salamat po. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, 
the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Okay. <laughs>